Welcome back to the channel, everyone. For the sake of laser experiments, we are gonna stink up the lab here today and try to laser weld some galvanized steel. So guys, I'm not trying to pretend like I know anything about lasers. I've only got a chance to use it just a few times. Right here, I've got my man Rex Alexander from the Handheld Laser Institute. He's got some miles on a laser. And today, he's gonna walk me through some of the challenges of welding galvanized steel. And it's not something that you've really dabbled with a whole lot. So we're gonna be a kind of a learning process for us both, huh? That's right, yeah. Most of my experience has been welding stainless steels. Okay. This galvanized steel welding, I understand the theory about what makes it bad and what should make it good. I've got some ideas of where we're gonna go and we'll figure it out together. Right, we should know all the troubles when it comes to welding galvanized steel. There's essentially a zinc coating over the steel itself. After that, it's just steel. But the properties of steel and zinc are a little different, right? Yeah, and it's super important, especially when it comes to laser, right? As we've discussed before, the energy density of a laser is incredibly high. That's what allows us to penetrate deeply into the material. Now, one of the things that comes into play when we're considering that energy density is the vaporization point of the materials that we're welding. So zinc, which is what our galvanized coating is made of, melts at about 450 degrees Celsius. It vaporizes at 950 degrees Celsius, but we're not melting our steel until about 14 or 1500 right. degrees Celsius. That's when you see that exactly. the, the bust of smoke, so, the porosity. The so issues. we're vaporizing all of that galvanized and creating that porosity. So I think we'll try a little bit of silicon bronze wire to do more of a laser braze. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. You can braze with a laser? We can, yeah. The trick here though is that copper is actually highly reflective for the laser. We're gonna have to play with our settings just a little bit to be able to melt that wire. Now when we're brazing with the laser, we probably won't get a lot of penetration, but it is gonna reduce the fumes and we're not gonna get all that nasty vaporized. Brazing galvanized with laser has been kind of the leading thought process for the past few years. Uh, recently though, I've seen a few things where people have actually been defocusing the beam on the surface and using stainless wire. So you okay. retain your corrosion resistance. By defocusing the beam, we don't vaporize the galvanized. And by using the laser properly, we can actually get good penetration. And not only that, but I get to beat on some metal again, right? We're we'll gonna do it. some destructive testing. We're gonna do some T-joints, get some brake, fillet weld breaks. We're also gonna do some lap joints and do some cross-sectional looking, etching, see what we got as far as quality welds and brazes. Yeah, today we're just gonna do some experiments. For our first experiment, we're gonna run carbon steel wire. What kind of wire? We're S2. gonna run ER70S6. Okay, yep, 045 diameter. We're gonna use the Lightweld XR today. It's gonna to be that 1500 watt laser. It does have a higher focal point, right? It's got a tighter. Tighter than the XC. Point. Yep, so the XC has got 150 microns and this machine has about a 50 micron spot size. I mean, we're not welding anything thick. We're gonna be doing T-joints, lap joints, and butt welds and destructively testing all of them. Yeah, we're gonna just do some basic sheet metal work, some basic sheet metal testing. We don't need to run any crazy high powers or anything for this. We'll probably be operating somewhere in the 500 to 800 watt range. Uh, we're gonna be starting with a travel speed of about 16 inches per minute. I find that's a pretty comfortable starting point for most welders in the real world. Because we it's one inch of wire for inch of weld. Exactly. Right? That makes it a little easier when it comes to knowing your travel it speed. It does, you can calculate things really easy. Way easier. Yeah. Our wobble width will set to be just slightly wider than our wire diameter here. And then our wobble frequency, we'll, we'll tune that a little bit and see what we can do to get the best weld. Nitrogen. We'll be using nitrogen as a shielding gas today. Cool. Yep. So everything that we do with carbon steel and with stainless steel, nitrogen stabilizes that keyhole and reduces porosity. Sweet, sweet. Well, let's get to it. Let's do it. All right, before we shoot a single laser, we gotta make sure we're safe about it. We've got our Kintec laser safe barrier all the way around. I have also taken the safety course to be the safety, what is it? You're a certified laser safety officer meeting ANSI Z136.1 standards. And if you would also like to be a certified safety officer for lasers, you can check out the link down below. We have some of those courses for you. Uh, make sure you also have your laser safe welding hood and your laser safe glasses, because that's just what you gotta have to do. A little bit different, now they are Z71, so they are shatter resistant, right, as far as safety glasses go, mm -hmm. so they're pretty much the same, except it does prevent all those other fancy rays that come off the yep. end of that old dog. We got optical density seven on these glasses we're wearing, so it's blocking 99.9999999% of that laser wavelength that we're using to weld today. Sick, double face protection is always good practices, and we're welding galvanized, so we've got a little bit of a fume extraction system over here so we can suck up some of those poisonous zinc fumes, so I ain't gotta put a bunch of milk in this boy. All right, let's weld. So first off, we're gonna just make a, a, a real nasty one on the galvanized with the carbon steel. You don't think this is gonna work at all? Oh no, I've done this for customers a few times, it's gonna turn out like hot garbage. 
It looks like it's doing fine. Is the coating on this just not that thick compared to the other galvanized we've got? I guess light weld's just too good. It's just eating right through it. I think we should just weld a couple of these out and do some destructive testing on them anyway. Yeah, you want to just do it with the carbon steel instead we'll of try, stainless We'll try steel? carbon, we'll try the brazing, we'll try the stainless and see which one seems to be the hot, toughest. I'm impressed. Good golly, Miss Molly. Yeah, look at all, look at all that spatter on yeah, there. Yeah, a lot of the material from the wire got thrown yeah. out. <laughs> There's a lot of missing material on there. Now I'm willing to bet that the difference between this and the butt weld is the fact that this is sheared material, so where we've cut on that butt weld, mm. there's way less zinc. We only have a little bit of zinc to deal with on the surface, but once we have this lap weld, we're trying to penetrate the upper edge and the lower edge here and the bottom edge of that. We have way more zinc in the joint and now it's boiling mm -hmm. out. Yeah, that looks, that looks terrible. That's not so bad. I wonder why. I would have expected a lot more disaster like the lap joint. You need both. Now I did narrow our wobble just a little bit on this because I wanted to get a better shape on that T. I mean, that doesn't look too shabby at all. All right guys, so we've switched over to the silicon bronze wire. We've got our settings. We got 400 watts on the machine, 50 hertz, 1.8 on the wobble. See what happens. Let's do it. It looks like it's working better than the steel. Sure does. That steel just had nothing but blowouts. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely no blowouts on that compared to the steel joint. Yeah, the surface looks a little rough, but we've rounded that full edge. And it looks nowhere near as bad as that other weld we made. No, that other one was chock full of holes and BBs. I think you got it that time. There we go. I mean, honestly, man, I'm seeing a lot of success in everything that we're sticking in this Me wire too. feeder. I would probably call that the closest to a braze out of anything we've done yet. Now you believe that the stainless steel is going to be our best option, so let's switch over to that. Let's the, see what that. happens. So with the welds we were making earlier, we had a 10 millimeter spacer on our extension tube. And that puts the focus position in the right spot to make a weld with carbon steel or stainless steel. What we're going to do now is actually stack two 7 millimeter spacers on top of each other and get ourselves about a 5 millimeter defocus. That's going to spread the beam on the surface, and the theory is that we won't vaporize that zinc, but that it'll melt nicely into the surrounding material by the time we melt all the other material. You guys see why I brought him? We'll see how it goes. Sweet. All right, we got 1,000 watts, 50 hertz, 1.4 on the wobble. All right, you ready? Still getting some spatter here. Oh yeah, that, oh, dude, look at that chunk, dude. Yeah, That's we're getting really chunks. Let's see, this, this lap weld seems to be one of the more challenging joints that we're dealing with today. A thousand watts is gonna work great for the butt weld, but I think we're gonna turn it back down to 700 for this lap weld and see how it looks. It's throwing a bunch still, of stuff. Still throwing everywhere. The best lap weld might have been with that silicon bronze. It totally was. Oh yeah, she getting through there. So we could turn it down. This is all that game where we're experimenting and trying to figure out what works best for the situation. So I did crank our power down to about 600 watts.
Beautiful. That looks great. There you go. That is a good looking filler weld, sir. So I had fun watching you work. I had fun too. I think we learned some things. No, I, I think you I think you really narrowed things down. It's like you said, we're both uh, kind of learning on this little galvanized what's going to be good and what's going to be bad. And I think both of us were kind of wrong in a few aspects of what that we thought was going to happen. Yeah, you know, I was surprised just like you. Uh, I think the, the butt weld's pretty straightforward. All the materials worked really well on the butt weld. Mm -hmm. And I think part of that is because we're we're not wobbling much wider than our filler material and we're punching down that sheared edge that already doesn't have any zinc on it. Sure. So I think the low level of zinc, mm. relatively speaking, in that butt weld makes it simple for all those materials. Even using the same parameters for this T-joint in stainless steel and the, T and the lap joint in stainless steel, there's a massive difference. So maybe there's some sort of back pressure issue with the zinc vapor inside of that seam. Right, because there's, the more, there's more metal to trap gases mm -hmm. in here. Same material, different joint configuration. Same material, same parameters, different, different, different joint. Yeah. Crazy. Now what we're going to do is cut these cross sections to get a little bit more info and we'll see if these things bend around as far as these butt welds. We're going to bend them around all the way to see if they hold and we're going to break off these T-joints and see some more info. Let's do it. So I zipped these in half real quick and just, I mean, it didn't take much for us to really have to look at these, getting the cross section to even see a good weld in there was hard to see. Yeah, I mean, most of that stuff all got ejected out when we were making that weld. Yeah, it's not even really anything worth looking at. Now the silicon bronze was the only thing that seemed to have any sort of effective throw or just a throw period, right? If there's yeah, weld, yeah there, I mean, there's... The, the silicon bronze on the, this lap weld is really the only thing that didn't blow out. And if you look at the cross section, it's a little hard to see without a, a good polish and etch. But we do have some pretty good root fusion in that braze. Yeah, it's there. All right, let's do the fillet weld break test. I don't know if this is how difficult that's going to be. Put her flat on the table. And that was the braze right there. That's a good, it's stuck, you know. It's more of a hybrid uh, braze and weld. But you can definitely tell. I mean, that looks brazed. Yep. So on this one right here is going to be our stainless steel. I don't know, I feel like that was almost easier than the silicon bronze, but you could see, I mean, we're ripping metal out there. I'll give that everything a good once over. Let's get this last one done, this last break. This would be our, this is the carbon steel, yeah? Yep, that's the carbon we'll steel. That's gonna be just the same. Yeah. Oh, I bent it the wrong way. It doesn't so look out. like it's breaking there, doctor. I'm so out of shape. <laughs> <laughs> I think the carbon really did good. I think the base metal will break will break in half right now before you break that weld. I got to do it. I got to do it for them, for those people right there. There we go. I want someone to tell me that laser welds are weak and have no penetration. That broke in the parent metal. Laser welds are not weak. This is our, our braze. It's from all that working out on that last T-joint. <laughs> I reckon the sugars probably gave it some uh, some structural issues. You think? I don't think so. No. No, it's going to be mostly corrosion issues. I think that'll hold up. You're right. You're right. It. Sugar shoots is what we like to say. <laughs> I mean, if you, if I get to watch you work, I guess you have to watch me work too. <laughs> I just get to do the fun part. Yeah. I thought this was actually going to be funner. I'm going to say that this butt weld. Just like any other butt weld that you do a bend test, it bends all the way. I don't need to prove anything to you guys yeah. anymore. Sorry, I'm getting worked up. This is the El Carbone. I know there's plenty of people gonna tell me I'm doing this so wrong.
There's your parent metal. You no go. weld. No weld breaky. Uh, that carbon cell carbon weld turned out real nice. Carbon welds that galvanize as long as you don't stick it in a freaking lap joint. As long as you don't do that lap joint, yeah. I'm impressed. <laughs> Cut. Even by my standards. <laughs> cut <laughs> <laughs> to try to get some just final feedback for everyone what we really kind of saw here today uh, i would say that we have some fascinating results when it comes to the fillet weld brake test in particular the braze looks like a braze on the butt weld i mean it looks like that sheet metal is still sheet metal yeah and i'll note when you were breaking the braze too it was fairly brittle compared to the stainless and the carbon Incredibly, steel we were working right. with Right. And same thing with the T-joint, right? You can still see that it was a braze. It did hold up. It was still strong. It, it bent all the way. Yeah. yeah. Now, the interesting thing is if you look at where that T-joint failed, it didn't fail through the fr the throat of the weld like I would mm -hmm. expect. Cracked at the it toe. It actually cracked right at the toe, which I think shows me it's it's exactly the braze that it's we were after on that joint. Right. That's what you'll typically see. It should be just busting right next to that base metal. You know, you braised it. So I think we successfully laser brazed. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty much everything here. When it comes to the stainless steel, compared to the carbon, it's kind of fascinating. You thought it was going to be the ticket for mm -hmm. welding galvanized. Uh, it, it obviously has got plenty of structural sound on the butt weld. I bent it around, did everything I needed to do for that. Um, but the T-joint is more specifically different than the carbon that Yeah, the, the T-joint, if you look at the T-joint, this is the standard failure that I would expect in the stainless steel welds or a fillet weld even generally speaking, where we failed straight through the throat of that fillet. If you look at the root on this edge, you'll see we did get really good penetration along that root about three quarters of the way through that sheet. Yeah, no, definitely. It looks like most of that has been chewed up. Now, as far as the butt weld goes for the carbon steel, I think it's a successful result when it comes to destructive testing. Parent metal is the only thing that broke across the edge of both of these. I mean, you guys saw it. I was... You're yeah. sweating up a storm. I'm good now. I'm good. I'm back to normal. I'm equalizing. I'm libriumed. I got my librium. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to go check out the links down below for IPG Photonics and Light Weld as we do a lot of experiments with this system. Thanks for welding with me today, Rex. It was a blast. Yeah, absolutely. We had a lot of fun. I think you learned, I learned. We could definitely continue to optimize these welds and do more experiments. If there's anything you guys want to see, specifically with laser weld development or testing, hit us up, let us know. We'll do some more videos. I got a pro. Where, do you, where, where can they find you, man? Find me www.handheldlaserinstitute.com or the Handheld Laser Institute on Instagram. Legit.